Jabala Upanishad Brihaspati, the preceptor of the gods, asked the sage Yajnavalkya, which is the Kurukshetra, where the gods perform sacrifices, and which is the abode of Brahman in all beings? Yajnavalkya replied, Avimukta is the Kurukshetra where the gods perform sacrifices to deities and which is the abode of Brahman in all beings. Hence, wherever one goes, one shall think thus. This is the Kurukshetra, the place where the gods perform sacrifices to the deities and which is the abode of Brahman in all beings. This is the spot where, when the vital airs depart from the living person, Rudra imparts the mantra to him by which, becoming immortal, he attains liberation. Hence, one shall resort to the Avimukta, shall not desert the avimukta brihaspati said so it is yajnavalkya verily it is so o revered one thereafter the sage atri asked of yajnavalkya how am i to realize the self which is infinite and unmanifest to this yajnavalkya replied that avimukta is to be worshipped the self which is infinite and unmanifest is established in the avimukta which is the place where avimukta is established that is established in between Varana and Nasi. What is meant by Varana and what by Nasi? The Varana is so called as it wards off all the faults committed by the organs of perception and action. The Nasi is so named as it destroys all sins committed by the organs which is the seat of that avimukta that which is the well-known juncture of the eyebrows and the nose is the juncture of heaven and this world the knowers of the veda worship indeed this juncture as sandhya that avimukta is to be worshipped. He who knows this thus imparts the wisdom of the avimukta. That is, the individual self is no other than the attributeless Brahman to his disciples. Then the students asked him, Pray tell us, what is that mantra? by reciting which one attains immortality. He replied by Shatarudriya. These mantras are indeed the names of immortality. By these one becomes immortal. Then Janaka, the king of the Videhas approached Yajnavalkya and requested him, Revered sir, expound to me the tenets of renunciation. He then replied, After completing the period of disciplined studentship, that is, the Brahmacharya, one may become a householder. After being a householder, he may become a forest dweller. 
that is become a vanaprastha having become a vanaprastha he may renounce the world and thus become a mendicant monk or alternately he may embrace renunciation from brahmacharya itself or from the stage of a householder or from the forest life of a vanaprastha it can also be that a person may renounce worldly life that very day on which distaste for it dawns upon him whether he is one not observing the vows before the stage of renunciation or observe them whether he has undergone the prescribed ablution on completing the disciplined studentship or not whether he is one who has discontinued maintaining the sacred fire at the death of his wife or is one who does not maintain the sacred fire some prescribe the sacrifice called prajapatya but though thus laid down he may not do so he shall only perform the sacrifice in which agni is the deity for agni is the vital breath thereby he does strengthen the vital breath he shall then perform the sacrifice for the three forms of agni in him namely sattva rajas and tamas are strengthened by this sacrifice having performed the sacrifice he shall smell the smoke of the holy fire reciting the following mantra o fire this vital breath is your source as you are born from sutratman that is at the proper time you shine forth knowing him the atman your ultimate source you may merge in him may you increase our wealth which here means the transcendent knowledge verily this is the source of fire namely the vital air so what is said by this mantra is may you go unto your source swaha having procured the holy fire from the village he shall smell as described previously if he is unable to procure the holy fire he shall offer the oblations in water for water is verily all the gods reciting i offer the oblation to all the gods swaha he shall tender the oblation and picking up a small portion of the offered oblation which is mixed with ghee he shall eat it as this is beneficial the mantra of liberation that is om is the essence of the three vedas this he shall realize it is brahman and it is to be worshiped indeed so it is o revered yajnavalkya said janaka then the sage atri asked yajnavalkya may i ask you yajnavalkya how is one without the sacred thread a brahmana yajnavalkya replied the conviction that i am the self alone is his sacred thread he shall then sip water this is the method enjoined on those who renounce worldly life in the case of kshatriyas and others not entitled to renunciation 
they may seek liberation in the path of the brave who caught death in the battlefield or fast unto death as a discipline or enter into water to rise no more or enter fire to be burnt to ashes or undertake the great journey in which they collapse by exhaustion then in the case of those entitled to renunciation the mendicant monk wearing colored garment with shaved head accepting nothing except food for bare sustenance being pure injuring none in thought word or deed austerely living on arms become fit for realizing brahman if sorely afflicted by disease etc they may renounce the world by mental resolve or by spoken words uttering mantras this way of renunciation has been prescribed by brahma the ascetic following this path realizes brahman thus indeed it is o revered yajnavalkya appreciated janaka there are sages called paramhansas as in the days of yore the sages samvartaka aruni shwetaketu durvasa ribu nedagha jadbharata dattatreya raivataka and others wearing no distinguishing marks with conduct beyond the ken of worldly people and who behaved as though bereft of their senses though perfectly sane discarding all these namely the threefold staff the water pot the sling the bowl the cloth for purifying water tuft of hair and sacred thread in water by reciting bhu swaha the paramhansa shall seek the atman possessing a form as one just born that is unclad unaffected by the pairs of opposites such as heat and cold pleasure and pain accepting nothing except bare sustenance well established in the path of the truth of brahman of pure mind receiving arms into the mouth literally into the vessel of the belly at the prescribed hour in order to sustain life becoming equanimous at gain or loss of arms sheltering himself without an abode of his own in an unoccupied house a temple a clump of tall grass or a heap of straw an ant hill the shade of a tree a potter's hut a cottage where sacred fire is kept sandy bank of a river a mountain thicket or cavity a hollow in a tree the vicinity of a waterfall or a piece of clean ground making no efforts in any kind of gainful activity free from mindness that is a sense of possessiveness ever meditating on brahman devoted to the self ever intent on eradication of the good and bad karma the sage finally gives up his body in the state of renunciation such a sage is indeed a paramhansa thus ends the upanishad
here ended the jabalo upanishad belonging to the shukla yajurveda